So in this session, we'll discuss about a motion, which is also known as a circular motion. So what happened in a circular motion, when object move in a circular path, we call that motion as a circular motion. So example, object is moving in this manner. Is it a circular motion? Yes or no? It's not a circular motion. Why? Because it's not a circular path. So when object is moving in a circular path, exactly circular path, then we call that as a circular motion. So this is not the right circular motion. This is a circular motion. What happened in a circular motion, the object continuously changes the direction. The direction of the motion is continuously changing. So example, if I say the speed was five meter per second at point A, at point B, it is also five meter per second, at point C, it is also five meter per second, and at point D, it is five meter per second. The question is, is there a change in speed? Yes or no? Is there a change in the speed? What about others? Saim, Hatim, is there a change in the speed? So here the speed is not cha changing. So we say there's no change in speed. The second part, is there any change in velocity? Keep in mind, velocity is a vector quantity, depends on the direction as well. Yes or no? So yes, there is a change in velocity because the object is changing the direction. So whenever the direction change, so why there is a change in velocity? because the direction is changing. As you can see, the direction at A is different from direction of at B and direction at B is different from direction at C and direction at C is different from direction at D. Is this object accelerating? Yes or no? Acceleration means change in velocity. If there is a change in velocity, there is acceleration. Is this object accelerating? So because the velocity is changing and whenever there is a change in velocity, this object is accelerating. It's not about, because acceleration or not only depends on the magnitude, it also depends on the direction. If the direction of velocity changes, the object will accelerate as well. And whenever the object is accelerating, there is a resultant force. <clears throat> so there is a resultant force. What is the direction of the resultant force in a circular path? So the direction of the for resulting force in a circular path, it is always acting towards the center. So example, if I say, what is the direction of the force? So these arrows in the red are representing the direction of the force. So whenever we draw the direction of the force, it is always acting towards the center of this circular path. So 
whenever object is moving in a circular path it is always accelerating so keep in mind if a question is object move in a circular path so there is always acceleration why there is always acceleration because there is a continuous change in direction and due to this continuous change in direction the object is always accelerating and in this circular motion there is a force acting on the object and the direction of the force is always towards the center of this circular path so when object is moving in a circular path we call that as a circular motion objects are moving in a circular path due to a constant force which is directed towards the center and this force is having a specific name what we call that we call that as a centripetal force so centripetal force is a name given to the direction of the force acting towards the center example say a racing car a formula 1 car moving in a circular track so there is always a force and what is the direction of the force it's always towards the center same thing if a cyclist is taking a bend or a round so there is always a force acting towards the center same way a merry go round so their force is acting and what is the direction of the force it is always towards the center and in this example what is the direction of the force it will always act towards the center so object moving in a circular path always experience a force and that force is towards the center is it clear the concept of the circular motion and the centripetal force any doubt or a question related to this part there is a formula to calculate the centripetal force but in o levels you don't have to learn this formula you just have to learn the factor on which the centripetal force depends this centripetal centripetal force depend on the mass of an object so if the mass of an object increase the centripetal force will increase example i have two objects of different masses and i tied them with a rope of same length this object is 5 kg other object is 50 kg which object i need a greater centripetal force to move in a circular path a or b i want to move them in a circular path which one i need a greater force to move so for b i need a greater force because it's a heavy object so i have to change the direction many times that's why i need a greater force so centripetal force increases as the mass of an object increase it also depends on speed of an object like i have the same objects in a same identical object in a same track but i want to move them at a different speed this one i want to move only with the speed of 2 meter per second slow and the other one i want to move at a 20 meter per second with the same radius which one i need a greater force a or b which case i need a greater force to move the object here we want to move it slow other one we want to move it fast so b we need a greater force because we want to move it faster so whenever you want to move the object faster you should apply a greater centripetal force you can experience this like example you can take a stone or a pebble small size stone and tie it with a string and move in a circular path slowly but if you try to move it faster you can feel the force which you are applying by a string that force will increase so centripetal force or the force which is acting towards the center increases as the mass of an object increase speed of an object 
increases. And the third one, if the radius of a circle decreases, we need we have to apply more centripetal force. Example, because in a smaller radii, we have to change the force is needed to change the direction. So in a smaller radii, smaller circular path, we have to change the direction many times. But in a large circular path, we don't have to change the direction many times. For a short distance, it can move in a straight line. So which one we need a greater force in B, we need a greater force because we have to change the direction many times as the force is needed to change the direction here. We don't have to change the direction many times. So that's why we need a smaller force. Is it clear? The three factors on which the centripetal force or the force of the gravity of uh, centripetal force or force which cause the circular motion depends. It depends on the mass of an object, heavy object. We have to move it with a greater force in a circular path. It depends on the speed. If we want to move at a higher speed, we have to apply a greater centripetal force. And it also depends on the size of a circular path. If size of a circular track or path is smaller, we have to change the direction continuously. That's why we have to apply a greater force as compared to a large object. Uh, radii. Both cases we are moving with the same speed, but with different force as we have to change the direction continuously. So planets are orbiting around the sun due to the constant gravitational force. So in that case, the gravitational force is actually the centripetal force. Like as these planets, they're revolving or moving around, as you can see, like this is a sun and all the planets are moving around the sun. So th why they're moving around? Because there's a force of gravity and force of gravity is acting towards the center. So we also say in this example, force of the gravity is the centripetal force. Is it clear? The, any force which is directing towards the center when object is moving in a circular path, we call that as a centripetal force. So these are some examples. Electron is moving around. As electrons are moving around the nucleus in a circular path. So the force is there. But this is not the gravitational force what we call because this is a force between the charges. So we call that as an electrostatic force. So in this example, electrostatic force is the gravitational force. So this was about the centripetal force, the circular motion. Any question related to this topic? So exam point of view, what you have to keep in mind, you have to keep in mind the factor. You have to keep in mind the factors on which the centripetal force depends. You don't have to memorize any formula for this. And you just have to recall the idea that centripetal force in between the planet as the planets are revolving or moving around the sun. So the centripetal force is actually the gravitational force is a centripetal force. So I'll end the session and share this recording with you.